and my name is Quincy Davis, Assistant Professor of Jazz Drum Set here at the University of Manitoba. Today I'm going to be talking about comping. Comping is one of the most important things we do as jazz drummers, but it's often overlooked. Many drummers, I find, aren't quite sure what to play in their left hand and their right foot, though they may have the independence for it. So why is comping so important? Well, it allows us to interact and respond to things that are happening in the band without breaking up the overall intensity of the time and feel in the ride cymbal. It also allows us to instigate various cross rhythms and syncopation, keeping the music interesting, fun, and exciting without letting the pot boil over, so to speak. In order to really understand the art of comping, it's imperative that we delve deep into the recordings of all the master drummers who have played this music. Drummers such as Billy Higgins, Ben Riley, Elvin Jones, Lewis Hayes, Frankie Dunlop, Art Taylor, Ed Thickpin, the list goes on and on and on. And it's really important that we check out and study all of them. In doing this, you'll find everyone has a different way of comping. So studying all these different drummers will give you many different approaches and it'll give you a plethora of language, comping language, to draw from. The drummer most responsible for this concept of playing time in the ride cymbal and playing different cross rhythms in the snare drum and the bass drum is Kenny Clark. While playing with the Teddy Hill Big Band, Kenny began to experiment with keeping time in the ride cymbal while cutting the time in the snare drum and the bass drum in order to keep up with the fast tempo arrangements the band would sometimes play. Now, this didn't go over well with Teddy Hill, and in fact, it got him fired. But you have to remember that this is during a time, the swing era, when timekeeping was done mainly on the bass drum, and the left hand would often play beats two and four, or wood chop. Though this new approach didn't go over so well at the time, years later when he became the house drummer at Mitten's Playhouse in Harlem, New York City, this concept allowed him to be free enough to interact and respond to the many cross rhythms and syncopation that would occur in the band. He was free to comp and, as they would say back then, drop bombs. This approach became the fundamental approach of modern jazz drumming, and it's the approach upon which we base everything we play on the kit today. So at this point, I'd like to give you some simple ideas for comping that are based on the many different comping ideas used by some of the great masters of this instrument. These ideas will hopefully help you begin to think more about the rhythms that you play in the left hand and the right foot. The first idea is one that's based off of the beats and of two and the and of four. So I'm gonna play it very simple and kind of expound upon that and see where it leads me. This next idea I'm going to play for you is something that Art Blakey used to play a lot. Now I'm going to play it two different ways. The first way is the way Art Blakey played it, and then the next way is the way Art Taylor played it. Now Art Taylor was a huge Art Blakey fan, and if you listen to early recordings, 
he sounded a lot like our Blakey. But this particular lick, which the rhythm is, let me tell you the rhythm, the and of two, and of three, and then beat four. Now, you have to make sure you snap your hand for beat four in order to really get the full effect. Make sure you snap. However, Art Taylor would leave that last note into the drum to create a, a completely different sound in timbre. It's really cool. So check it out. This next idea I'm going to show you is one that Max Roach would play quite often. And it's really cool because it creates a conversation effect between the snare drum and the bass drum using hemiola, rhythms that extend across the bar line. Triplets are a great way of achieving a more organic and earthy feel and feeling. Elvin Jones was a master at playing the triplet between the limbs and around the drums. Now I'm going to start with some simple triplet ideas and then kind of expound upon that and see where that leads. Remember with these triplets and with anything you play on the kit, accents are very important. A lot of people forget about the accents, but accents are what bring your rhythms to life. So remember that. Okay, check this out. requires a very high level of independence. I recommend working out of a couple of different books and I'm going to list those books down below. Working out of a book can help you hone in on the more technical aspect of whatever you're working on and in this case it's comping. When you're comping you want to be free. You want your left hand and your right foot to be free to play whatever rhythms you want them to play while not interfering with the ride symbol. All right, so I hope you learned a lot, and I hope from now on you put a little more thought into what you comp. And if you like the lesson, push the like button and subscribe. Tell your friends because I'll be putting up more videos. All right, take care, and don't forget to leave some comments, uh, any questions, and suggestions for future videos. Take care.